um, of customer care that is in there uh, in a way that if you pay through our system, you will immediately hold the collections process um, and that that last sentence that is uh, everywhere in those emails, uh, if you have already paid, uh, please disregard this message. Uh, well, if the message wasn't sent at all, maybe it would be better. So that kind of synchronization is also a big advantage in, 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 in the way that we do things. <laughs> uh, my guest today is Pedro Mendez. He is the founder of Invisible Collector, and they're a software as a service platform. And where are you based, Pedro? Uh, Porto, Portugal, in Europe. I'm sure it's very lovely there, although I know you said today was raining. Very rainy. rainy. <laughs> it doesn't rain that much. It rains more than most of the cities in this region of the world, but uh, not. it shouldn't be as rainy today as it is, but okay. <laughs> So maybe we can start off with what is Invisible Collector? Well, it's um, um, if you look at a typical credit collection agency full of people making phone calls, uh, you can, using our system, forget all that, get the same service faster and in, in a digital context. So it's basically, it's basically a system where you can collect your overdue debts um, without the need to have collectors on, on your payroll. Oh, excellent. Okay. So how, how did the company get started and how long ago? So we founded the company in 2016. Um, uh, both me and my two co-founders, Miguel and João, we were friends for many, many years. And uh, one day we were sitting in a coffee and Miguel was a bit frustrated with the lack of automation in his work. Uh, and he started telling, well, I'm a professional collector. I work in the second largest European company in the business and I have to process payments uh, in a 20-year-old IBM system, oh, wow. which they sell it's uh, top-notch for, for the industry. And we, me and Juan, we got shocked. So everything, everyone is talking about IoT, uh, uh, AI, and you don't even have automation. So uh, we started asking a couple of companies from all sizes and, and different businesses how they how they did manage debt and very poorly from what we, we, we could observe. There was no science, there was no logging. Um, and within that context, we say, well, maybe you we can build something to, to explore this space. Um, and so in those two years, we developed several prototypes that we put in some companies, mostly industry companies. And uh, uh, we signed up for a couple of uh, um, innovation programs like the one in my back, which belongs to the, the, the largest electricity company here in, in Portugal. And we were successful with several pilot experiences that started with uh, firstly automation and on later stages, like most of the business that we're doing now, uh, with already some, some, uh, some analytics that come from, from applying AI to, to the space, like uh, deciding uh, automatically when to contact or when to reach the debtor, uh, how to split debtors uh, into significant clusters. And that has been raising uh, the amount of money that actually gets, gets collected uh, when, when comparing with, with traditional approaches. And what type of companies do you typically work with? Like who would use Invisible Collector? Uh, as of now, um, we're mostly focusing on, on two to three verticals. We're working with uh, companies that have a lot of invoices or uh, that have a lot of things to receive, but of relatively small amount. So we're working with electricity com companies, uh, water distributors, gas distributors. Uh, that is a space. Then we have the telco space. And here in, 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 in Portugal, we're going to start uh, within the context of a partnership to work with Vodafone, for instance. Oh, wow. uh, then we're working with banks. Uh, we're banks, mostly banks that have some department that does consumer finance. They fund, um, they fund cars. Uh, if you want to do some remodeling in your home and you want to split that in, into, uh, into several months, the whole, the whole payment, uh, those types, those types of, companies that do that type of loaning um, it's also a very interesting space for us and then there's uh, the b2b space and the b2b services where we have 
uh, suppliers for um, uh, let's say for uh, for hotels uh, for uh, uh, the health sector as well uh, consumables for dentists uh, oh wow okay so there's quite those a invoices are not as small but it's but it's also yeah. a space where we're removing so uh, the the competitors that you're competing against are more traditional debt collection firms Yes, traditional competitors uh, occupy 90 to 95 percent of, of the market. It's about a 70 billion dollar market, oh, wow. uh, and it's mostly occupied by traditional competitors. And you can see here and there some some more digital oriented competitors rising, uh, rising, rising up. But having a digital base, um, if you if you go to that specific, it's a bit rare yet. So the, the difference between what you're doing and what they're doing, is it just the technology or like what's the experience for a company that uses Invisible Collector? Well, it's, it's not the, just uh, the technology. The way that the system uh, introduced itself within the flow, uh, the commercial flow of the company actually makes some changes or as I like to say, it prevents changes. Um, I don't know if you, if you, or anyone that might be listening to this, is if you ever uh, left an internet invoice and paid. Uh, up until that day, you may have received marketing emails. Um, they're all pretty and all HTML designed with, with all that tracking. And if you default just one single invoice, the next one is going to be a plain text email that says, please pay me or you're going to regret you have been born. <laughs> and that happens. That that is a, an industry standard. And um, on saturated markets, it's it's a terrible thing to happen because um, uh, you must have internet. So if you uh, are not paying those guys, maybe there's something uh, that is preventing you from paying. Like if you had no service or no quality service for that month, if you got unemployed. Uh, in any case, if you recover. With that kind of message, you will never look the same way to those guys again, and there are competitors. So uh, it, is, it is a system that tries to have or, or, or that achieves uh, a more consistent communication between the creditor company and, and the end debtor. And this kind of approach uh, really makes really, really makes a difference. And there's automation. So in automation, there's a, there's a lot of, um, of customer care that is in there. Uh, in a way that if you pay through our system, you will immediately halt the collections process. Um, and that, that last sentence that is uh, everywhere in those emails, uh, if you have already paid, uh, please disregard this message. Uh, well, if the message wasn't sent at all, maybe it would be better. So that kind of synchronization is also a big advantage in, 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 in the way that we do things. So uh, what, what's the kind of the comparison of you know is there a difference in success rates or retention of customers yes, I, I i can um just for instance our, our banking customers uh when they started with us uh all their portfolios um they they were collecting 69 to 75 percent uh of their portfolios being sent to these traditional competitors and we kick-started our operation immediately with 79 80 Oh, wow. uh, and you're talking about an extra 5% on 80, uh, on oh. 75. And now the average is on 85 to 86. And it keeps increasing. Um, it keeps increasing. So uh, there is a big difference. Uh, there is a, a really big difference um, that is maybe even more, more important if you're working in the market where the interest rate may be a little bit higher than zero. <laughs> yeah, which is weird that. I don't know. <laughs> um. <laughs> You know, it's a very, very strange world out there for interest rates. In any case, if you ask for a loan, uh, they won't charge you zero. So right, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you need that money to continue operation. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so what's the financial model for customers that are working with Invisible Collector? How does the SaaS platform work? Yeah, we're, we're, um, um, uh, I can tell you a, a little bit of story. Uh, we started it was as a traditional SaaS company, uh, charging a monthly fee that unlocked uh, additional features as the monthly fee got higher. We had zero sales with that. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> because people thought, well, I buy X for for my ERP, and this will going is going to cost me thirty percent of that. It's too expensive. So 
we took a look at our traditional competitors and say, hey, our discharging, yeah, let's do the thing. So we now have customers that declined the first uh, the first proposals and signed up for the for these new ones, and they're paying uh, the same or more. Uh, but now they think it's cheaper. We charge a setup fee per 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 debt uh, that can be zero, and uh, uh, let's say a dollar for uh, for each debt that gets managed in the system. Uh, and then we have a plus, which is a commission for being successful, a success fee. Uh, that ranges uh, from uh, half percent to nine percent. It really depends on uh, the probability that we have on on collecting on on collecting that that specific that that, that specific debt. Um, so it, it, it is as simple as that. Two numbers. That's great. So, uh, what what advice would you give to anyone that's getting started in a SaaS or a you know, a startup business like you've obviously been over the last four years. You've gone yeah. from the road to, <laughs> um, well. Um, like your number one takeaway. Uh, I'd say that. Uh, um, so to avoid our biggest mistake, w that was to navigate on uncharted pricing waters. Um, I'd say that customers tend to form the prices in their heads based on some kind of comparison, and. Um, and they're always right on, on on that point. So there's no there's no really reason to fight them on that. So once we gave them something comparable, uh, something to put on their minds, you can compare our price with this supplier. Don't compare us with ERPs. Compare us with your lawyers. And they and they went there and they saw. Well, my lawyers are charging a twenty percent success fee, and these guys have a digital approach and they're charging me nine. So. Uh, maybe my lawyers are expensive and not these guys. Right. And that, that, that was a big shift in, in, in how we approach new customers. And it has been allowing us to scale a lot faster since we had this new message. And, and what is your sales model? How do, how do people find you? Or how do you find, get in touch with customers? Well, since we're working mostly with corporates, uh, we have um, uh, and we're fine-tuning the pipeline, but we're, we're, we're with a direct sales model uh, as of now. So we have... Uh, a couple, uh, a couple people working on on um, on generating leads, mostly on LinkedIn. Uh, the typical person that buys or that decides to buy this is usually someone or the CFO or someone from uh, the collections department of, of a given company, um, and we generate interest by sending uh, presentations, uh, uh, quick videos to those CFOs, and then uh, we arrange either meetings online meetings nowadays and uh, and uh, we offer um, uh, paid or free trials that have immediate conversion and with that uh, we put them in our portfolio things go as as now they're usually usually going um, this model is the idea is to stabilize this model and we're building up a couple of tools that will let uh, not, I wouldn't say SMEs, but medium companies, medial B2B service companies sign up for things online. That is still not at that point where I could say this is going to be a huge channel in two to three months, but in a semester, it is possible that this channel will start to generating some, some, some revenue as well. Terrific. Um, so it sounds like a lot of your technology you've built. Uh, what are kind of the big things that you put in place around? I know you talk a lot about automation, but what what are some of the tools that have really allowed you to be successful? So we uh, we uh, um, uh, for we've been uh, using uh, using clustering algorithms um, that 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 proves uh, to be really helpful. It goes and that that allows us uh, even on a base stage to use. Um, statistical methods to compare portfolios automatically. So the base idea and the basic, the basic social idea behind this is that if I treat every person differently, I will be more successful. Even if I don't have enough data to reach that, if I split it into significant statistical clusters, uh, I am going to improve uh, my way of interacting with them because it's very different to interact with uh, someone that is 60 years old and lives very far from a big city uh, to, a, to a millennial that lives in, in the center of New York. So the way that I communicate, the channels that I use, how many times should I try to reach them, 
everything everything can be studied and I shouldn't treat everyone as, as, as the same so in terms of uh, our current stage that is that is um, uh, that is, that is potentially the biggest key factor in our in our success then there are there are other things um, we have uh, we've developed a, a quite extensive uh, integration pool with CRMs uh, that are interacted uh, if we are not being successful in reaching out customers for instance if we have a file that is within the system for more than two weeks and the customer our customer is expecting to get things collected in a month uh, we activate the workflow automatically to try to ask him to uh, update the customer details because there's something there that is a bit wrong like uh, the phone number he gave us is not working and has never worked since we got it. Uh, the email is almost always, uh, almost always full, and when the message gets delivered, it's, it is never read. So, if there is a different contact, um, maybe our customer can update it. So that kind, that kind of um, pipeline really makes really makes a difference. I want to be conscious of your time, Pedro. So I'll wrap with a couple quick things. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? Well, uh, through the website, uh, through our LinkedIn, uh, our sales guys. So it's basically the the methods we have available. Uh, what's your What's the contact details? Uh, well, they can reach us if they want some kind of information to info at invisiblecollector.com. That will be the the quickest way to get uh, to get to get in touch with us. Great. Um, what's the future of Invisible Collector? Uh, well, uh, we want to get a, a, a um, we want to get a, a, a bigger part of that huge uh, of that of that huge market. Uh, we think we think we can we can we can we can get there. Uh, the future would, would be uh, if you go to if you want to search something online, you go to Google. If you want to collect something, you go to Invisible Collector. That would be that would oh, be oh, there the, you go. The, the perfect scenario. <laughs> I love it. That sounds very promising. Uh, the final thing is when we meet interesting founders of SaaS companies, we like you to nominate other interesting founders. So we're looking for anyone that has a software as a service. We typically talk to people with marketing or sales automation, but definitely not limited to that. So uh, I'm wondering if you have someone that you would like to nominate as a featured guest on the Automate and Grow SaaS founder profile. Let me think. There are a couple of things that I like. Uh, let me let me just just uh, do a twenty second search yeah. <laughs> in my in my in my in my in my index. Um, there's a there's a there's a, um, uh, an interesting company here in the in the in the um, in the accelerator. Um, they're called uh, Hype Labs. Well, there could be they are not specifically a SaaS, but they do have a, um, a networkless uh, communication SDK that allows you to have communication between two devices without. Uh, without uh, uh, having internet uh, presence, they have a couple of of uh, military projects and uh, uh, pilot projects with, with Greenpeace. So it may be interesting to 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 reach out those guys. Terrific. Do you, do you know them by any chance? Yes, uh, it's uh, Carlos Lay. Terrific. Okay, so Hype Labs, you've been nominated by Pedro to be a future guest on the SaaS Founders Profile. I gotta come up with a name for this, but <laughs> Pedro, I wanna thank you for your time today and I look forward to staying in touch with you over the next, over the future and see how Invisible Collector does. Okay, okay, Michael. Thanks so much for, for your time as well. Awesome, thank you very much. Bye-bye then.